Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode of Rachel's Page Turners. Today, as you can see, I'll be doing Twas the Night Before Christmas book tag created by Aoife at Fred Weasley Died Laughing. I will list her original video down in the doobly doo below. Twas the night before Christmas when all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. A book that kept you up so late everyone else was asleep. And the only times I ever really read at night was when I was reading the Harry Potter series when I was a kid. Simply because I wasn't allowed to read it and I had to read it at the dead of night so I wouldn't get caught. And the only other time was, you know, when I was in college and I, re I would read fan fiction till like 4am. So the only real answer I have to this question is the Harry Potter book series by J.K. Rowling. And it's perfect because this month is Harry Christmas to you, and a Christmas book tag would just feel wrong without Harry Potter. And Mama in her kerchief and I in my cap had just settled our brains for a long winter's nap, a book that made you fall asleep. And for this question, I have The Fiery Cross by Deanna Gabbleton. It is the fifth book in the Outlander series. Uh, I This is the last book I've read in this series thus far, simply because it is so big. And nothing of real importance happens in this book. It's pretty much just clear and, oh, I, I don't want to give away too much, but it's pretty much just clear and whoever is in her life just existing, like living their day-to-day -day lives. It is like prepping for another war, but there's nothing exciting that really happens in this book. When out on the roof there arose such a clatter, I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. A book or book scene that made your heart race. And I don't have this book, I borrowed it from the library, and it is A Woman in Black written by Susan Hill. I read it for the Halloween challenge back in October, and the way it was written, it definitely had my heart racing. I thought it was really spooky. I only wish that I had this giant terrified response from reading it, but in that, it definitely had me on edge. When, what to my wandering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. An object in a book that was utterly magical or a magical book. And for this question, again, I don't have the book in hand. It is a book that I actually have on my Kindle, and it is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. The way it was written, it really felt that I was there at this magical circus. The whole story itself is absolutely whimsical. If you haven't read this book, this season, like, I, I wanted to say it was more of a fall book, but the magical aspect is just perfect for the Christmas season. Which before I didn't understand why Harry Potter would be considered a Christmas book, from but from that angle, if we're considering it from a magical angle, magical books are just perfect for the Christmas season. With a little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be Saint Nick, a twinkle-eyed book character that made you happy. And for this question, I'm obviously going to pick Tom Bombadil from the Lord of the Rings series by J.R.R. Tolkien. To this day, I'm still really bummed that he never made an appearance in any of the Peter Jackson movies. But he is just this like really happy character. Super spry, very quick-witted. He doesn't really care much for the the main action of the storyline in um, in the Lord of the Rings series. For a second, I was going to say The Hobbit, but it's not. He meets Frodo, but he provides a really nice, like, humorous element to the story. So up to the housetop, the coursers they flew with a sleigh full of toys, and St. Nicholas too. A book that made you fly to another land. And I really had to think about this. Honestly, like any fantasy book really sets me off into another land. I just love fantasy novels. But after much thought, I actually picked a more like, more of a dystopian novel. It is Steelheart by Brandon Sanderson. I've talked about this book before. It is basically a dystopian novel with a comic book twist. Like the Superman-esque character Steelheart has these really powerful abilities but he becomes like this tyrant and when he went into power like he turned the whole city into steel and that I could really visualize and at times it felt like I was there which was kind of scary I wouldn't want to be there 
And then in a twinkling I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. A book creature you love. And for this question I answered Mr. Tumnus from the Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis. Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe was the first fantasy book I read, so I have a bit of a, a nostalgic feeling for Mr. Tumnus. Mr. Tumnus is the first creature that Lucy came across, and he almost kidnaps her, but the last second he decides against it and lets her back out safely. I just love how he's willing to do the right thing, even though there was consequences for him in doing so. He's such a brave, good little fawn. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A character that proves to be more than his or her first impression. And this was another question that I really struggled with, but in the end I picked Humans of New York Stories by Brandon Stanton. Uh, this isn't a, a fictional novel, this is actually um, a series of pictures that Brandon Stanton took, and in each picture you got to know everyone's story. And it just goes to show how you see these strange people on the street and you don't really know their backgrounds and occasionally you'll make like a first judgment on a person and it, you'd be surprised at how wrong you can be. He had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. A book or a book character that made you laugh. And the book that I chose for this question is Cress written by Marissa Meyer. Of uh, The interactions between Cress and Thorn was quite hilarious. Like, Cress is so naive, and there's times where Thorne didn't quite know what to do with her. It not only was it very funny, but it was actually kind of sweet and heartwarming. I definitely ship Cress and Thorne. They are my OTP. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. A book that made you feel safe. And for this question, I answered The Wind in the Willows, written by Kenneth Graham. When I was little, my dad used to read this series to me and to my siblings. We'd have, like, family nights. And The Wind in the Willows was actually one of my dad's favorites. So whenever I reread the series, I just, it brings me back to when I was a kid, and I do feel very safe when I read these series. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work, filled all the stockings, and then turned with a jerk. A book that put you to work a book that felt you really needed to concentrate on. And for this question, I answered Boy Snowbird by Helen Oyemi. Uh, I really loved the beginning of the story, but as the story progressed, I, I felt like I really needed to pay attention to it and really concentrate on it. Because there were times where the story really lagged. It had a really great topic of discussion. It really discussed about how we as a society kind of put preference to to the image of white people versus the image of black people and it discusses the consequences of that but it kind of just in my opinion i felt like it just skimmed the topic it didn't really get it didn't delve into the topic like i was hoping it would and the ending i just disliked the ending and I, it completely lost me so in order to finish the book i really had to put my nose to the grindstone happy christmas to all and to all a good night a book with a magnificent ending and for this question, I answered My Sister's Keeper by Jodi Piku. Uh, it has a really sad ending. Um, I, I can't really discuss the ending because I, I, it would be giving away too many spoilers, but the discussion of, the, of this book is really fantastic. Uh, the story is about these two sisters. Uh, one was diagnosed with cancer at a very young age, and the second one was really born so they could use her to help treat the older sister and really discusses, okay, does this child have a right to emancipate herself and make the choices for her own body, even though that she is underage? And it follows that discussion in the story of these two sisters. And the ending came out of nowhere. I fully expected this other ending, but this ending took place. And I am, I, I love sad endings. I love tearjerkers. It's definitely a guilty pleasure of mine. I absolutely love when an ending like makes an impact on me and which is why I had to choose this book for this question. So that was Twas the Night Before Christmas created by Aoife. Aoife, thank you so much for creating this tag. I thought it was really lovely and absolutely perfect for Christmas. Uh, I don't have anybody in mind right now who I'm going to tag in doing this video. If I tag anybody, I'll have listed down in the doobly-doo below. But if I don't tag you, please feel free to do it. Uh, it's 
awesome. I personally don't feel like you have to be tagged in order to do a tag. And if you don't feel like doing the tag, uh, how would you answer some of these questions? Please feel free to talk about it down in the comments below. And as always, if you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I would love to see you in the next video. Bye guys, and happy holidays.